Now this is something that's interesting. It's a web browser made by Amazon called Silk. That's the name of their browser. And one of the main features of the Silk browser is that they use their back end to actually try and predict what you might want next. So if you go to a website, uh, let's say for instance you go to ESPN.com, it tries to determine what you might want to see next and loads up all of those pages in the background on Amazon servers. So if you actually click on one of those things that it had anticipated that you might want to watch or might want to see on ESPN.com for instance it will load it up much quicker because it's all pre-rendered on the Amazon servers so that's a really interesting feature of this Silk browser here so what we're gonna do is we're going to go to YouTube and I'm gonna to go to my page and we're actually going to play one of my videos and see the quality on this device not only of the screen but also the sound quality so let's see, we're going to type a URL here. Actually, we don't have to. We're just going to click on YouTube. And this is what we get here. So let's see. You get a mobile version here, but you can actually hit the desktop version, which is what I'm going to do here. And we're going to see how that looks on this device. All right. That's the full desktop version of YouTube and pinch to zoom on the device seems pretty responsive and let's actually go up to the search box up here and we'll just look up my web page or my channel here and hit go all right Let's see, let's just go to my channel. Now right now I'm actually uploading. Let's hit pause on this. There we go. I'm actually uploading currently as I'm filming this, I'm uploading the unboxing video of this device and I had hoped it would have been done by now but it's not probably finished rendering. Now as you can see over here you have an ad and that's Flash and of course what you see here when you pull up a YouTube page in a browser is Flash as well. So the pinch to zoom seems pretty responsive on it. And let's actually play it again and let's see if we can turn up the volume. Let's see volume. Let's crank it up. And get rid of that again. In this video, we're going to do a review of the McTVia Multimedia Remote Desktop Receiver. Now, the pinch now to I zoom actually works fairly TV, well. I have my Asus laptop, and behind it is my television. Works fairly well while I'm actually playing content on it. And uh, let's bring that down a little bit. And if you notice, it actually pauses your content when you bring the settings menu down here. So that's interesting. All right, let's make this full screen. And there we go. So let's go back to that settings menu here. As you'll notice here, you have a couple of things that you can choose up here. You can lock it and unlock it. Right now it's unlocked, so that's the orientation of the device. So you can lock it in a landscape or a portrait orientation. Obviously you have your volume controls here. You have your brightness, your Wi-Fi, the sync, and let's see what the more is. Okay, more is telling you about the device here. So as you can see here, you actually have tabbed browsing on the device here. So you can click on this plus icon over there and it brings up a new tab and you can go anywhere so let's just go to I don't know Wikipedia over here now I want to see if you can actually uh, play a video and go to a different tab at the same time and still hear that video in the background I doubt it because this is running off of Android and you can't do that on Android tablets but I just want to check it on here anyway so I'm going to turn that on and let's go to Wikipedia. Yeah, it pauses it. 
just like a honeycomb tablet would. Even though this is not running honeycomb, this is running gingerbread. But you have your tab browsing here, and that makes it pretty nice. You can add several tabs up here. And it looks like you can add bookmarks down here. Let's see. Obviously, those are the bookmarks that I was looking at before, and you can add to them. And you can change the way they look here. You can have them on a list here, or you can actually have them on a grid here. Now, as you can see here, now my web page has been added to my carousel. So this pretty much will show you all of your recent activities here. Now, being that this is Android, you'd expect that you have a notification system on here. Normally on Android, you have the shade that you bring down, and you can't actually bring a shade down. But I do have two notifications up here. You probably can't see it because I have that blocked out over here because it says my name and then my Kindle. But um, what I'm going to do here is I'm going to tap on the top bar up here, and it's going to bring down my notifications. As you see, I have two notifications here, and they are apps that I downloaded. One was a Weather Channel app, and the other one was a comics app. So that's how you see your notifications. You have an option to clear them all here. If you want, you can click on one of them, and it'll bring you to whatever it was notified about. So here is my Weather Channel app here. Uh, I'm just going to go home here, and I'm going to go back to the notifications up here. Now, just to correct what I was saying before, you actually have to click on the little notification here where it gives you a number. And if you can't see it, it's just basically a number within a gray circle. So you click on that, and then it brings your notifications down. And if you don't want to address them, you could just leave it here by hitting your back button or your home button. Now, I do play Words with Friends from time to time, so I have it here. What I'm going to do, I downloaded it, but it's not on my bookshelf here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to add it. So I'm going to long click on it, and then you see Add to Favorites or Remove from Device. You can actually remove it from here just by long pressing it. But I want to add it to my favorites, so I'm going to click on that. And as you see down here, it's now on my favorites. And it dropped the Amazon app down to the next shelf. And then if you want, you can actually adjust the order of these things by putting this up here, and it drops the others down. Now, the one thing that's missing from this device is the voice-to-text. And I'm going to bring up the keyboard here, and as you can see it here, you have your full keyboard. But there is no voice-to-text support on this like you would expect out of an Android device. And that's because this is an Amazon device, and they don't have the Google services on here, such as Google Maps and the Android market, the official Android market. They do have the Amazon Android market, or the Amazon app market for Android. So that's just a couple of things that I noticed on the device so far. So that's firing up the Amazon Kindle for the first time and actually giving you a tour of the actual device functions. So that pretty much does it for this video. If you have any questions or comments, please post them down below. And I'll see you guys next time.